Hey everybody, Sean Powers here. It's a weird video today, even for me. And I was going to put this video on my secondary channel because it didn't really fit into the whole uh, Linux training niche. Uh, but it ended up being a pretty important lesson if you are going to be working on servers, uh, system administration in general, working on remote computers, servers, etc. Uh, basically what happened is I have a remote data center and uh, I have a, just a desktop machine as one of the test servers out there. Most of the servers are server class stuff, uh, but one isn't. And when I did an upgrade and restarted it, it wouldn't come back up. And so I had to drive all the way out there. I mean, I'll let you see the video, but the, the moral of the story is it's really important, uh, to uh, have a keyboard. <laughs> uh, no, but there's a reason that server hardware, uh, is used in remote server environments and that remote accessibility, uh, is a big one. Anyway, uh, enjoy my misery and, um, remember to always pack a keyboard. Hey everybody, so um, I am in my truck, so I guess this is officially truck cam, uh, but I got to drive out to my farm. Uh, so we are gonna visit my uh, little micro data center that is at my farm, but it's not for a great reason. See, uh, normally servers have the ability to uh, be remotely accessed with something called IPMI or ILO sometimes it's called and basically it's a way to uh, reach a server out of bounds meaning you can actually like in a window control the server including reboot rebooting it and like uh, seeing the reboot process uh, go in a in a remote window uh, one of my servers is just a desktop machine and desktop machines don't have that feature and so I had to drive out here because when I did an upgrade and I rebooted, it wouldn't come back up. So I'll go in and I'll show you what I'm talking about and uh, explain why uh, IPMI is so important. All right, so we'll come in here. Now this, of course, is my server rack. And I'll just give you a quick, actually it's kind of hard to get to stuff, but. So if you look on the back of this server, for example, you'll see there are ethernet ports here. There are actually four regular ethernet ports, and then there is one that kind of sits alone all by itself. And the one that sits all by itself is the IPMI interface. And like I said, it gets its own IP address and you can control it remotely usually using Java or HTML5 or something like that, and it allows you to remotely reboot it, like if the computer locks up or it gets stuck on a reboot. However, uh, this computer down here, which is just a, a desktop machine uh, that is running server software, I did an upgrade and it wouldn't reboot, and so I had to drive all the way out here to do this. and then turn it back on. And that was what the whole drive was for. <laughs> so anyway, if you have the option to get server class hardware, not only do you get the advantage of things like ECC RAM and uh, some more robust cooling and power supplies, like possibly redundant power supplies, you also usually get that IPMI interface which allows you to control and reboot a computer uh, when you are remote. This is really, really important, like if you have computers in a data center somewhere, because a lot of times, um, well, you can hire the local data center crew to reboot it, but I don't have a crew here. My daughter lives out here, but she's not home, so I had to drive all the way out. Anyway, IPMI is important, that's why. Uh, Jeff Gearling actually made a video. There are some options with things like Pi KVM, and that will allow you to use like a Raspberry Pi uh, to control the ports and the power switch of a computer if it doesn't have IPMI built in. So there are options for things like controlling a desktop remotely, uh, but you have to set them up, and I didn't. So here I am, and now I have to drive back home in the snow, in the dark. See you next time. And as a side note, it's always important to check that it actually comes back up before you leave because for some reason, it's not coming back up. So I'm going to be here for a while.
Well, and now I'm out in the actual barn at my farm because I don't have a keyboard. And it looks like there is something wrong with the file system on that computer. So I need to get from this boxes of junk sitting out here and hope that I have a keyboard somewhere so that I can go press enter. Well, so far, uh, no keyboard. So um, I'm gonna go look in the garage and Otherwise, I'm going to have to literally drive back home to get a keyboard to come back out here. Oh, wow. Uh, let this be a lesson to me and maybe everybody else. It's important to um, have these things on hand. And we're driving back home for a keyboard. Let's drive back, shall we? All that driving just so I could do this. The lesson is to always have a keyboard, apparently. So yeah, everything's fine. Um, and thank you to my Patreon supporters who make silly trips like this uh, not only possible, but actually make it worthwhile for me to record. So maybe somebody can learn from my mistake. Um, I do want to check out uh, Jeff Gearling's uh, options that he talks about for uh, a remote KVM system for that one computer because ugh, I don't ever want to relive tonight. See you in the next video. Oh, learn everything. Do what you love. And most importantly, be kind. Sometimes it's most important to be kind to yourself. I'll see you in the next video.